everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new. As you guys can see from the title today, I'm just going to be telling you guys what my top 10 favorite Grey's Anatomy episodes are. I previously did the Grey's Anatomy tag and in that video there were three videos I mentioned would be videos all on their own and that is my favorite episodes, my favorite songs, and my favorite quotes. So today I'm just going to be talking about my favorite episodes. I actually just realized that I have 11 episodes written down so you guys are going to get a bonus favorite and the episodes range all the way from season 7 up until season 14. All the other Grey's Anatomy videos that I mentioned in this video in particular will be listed in a playlist down below and individually. And I do want to mention that this is a big spoiler alert because I may spoil some things in here. So if you are not caught up to the current season, which is season 16, I highly advise not watching this video and waiting until you've seen that. I will not spoil anything from season 16. However, I make no promises on spoiling anything from 1 to 15. So that is just my disclaimer. That way you're not like, oh my god, I didn't know that. That just got spoiled. This is your spoiler alert. If you choose not to listen, that is your own fault, not mine. If your favorite episodes are the same as mine, definitely let me know down below. And if they are different, let me know what episodes are your favorite so I can check them out and maybe they will become more of my favorites. With a series like this, it is really hard to pick just 10 favorites. There are 338 episodes in total. And I had to narrow it down to just 10. And I did have a hard time and I did have to pick and choose. Now that I've gone on, let's just jump into the video. So I do have all of the episodes listed out on my phone with a couple different notes. So if I am looking down, it is because I am looking at my notes. I also want to mention that these are in order of season and episode. So they are chronological. They are not in the order of how much I like them. Starting off, season 7, episode 18, titled Song Beneath the Song is hands down one of the best episodes of Grey's Anatomy that is out there. It is one of the musical ones and a ton of people don't like musical episodes for any series. I know personally that I do not tend to like those. They've done them for like Riverdale and stuff and I didn't like them and I ended up skipping those episodes completely. However, this musical one is amazing and I literally have no words to describe how good it is. And the main storyline of this episode is that Callie and Arizona get into a wicked bad car crash. Kelly is pregnant with their daughter Sophia and essentially Kelly is ejected through the windshield and found on the hood of the car. Arizona gets by pretty much unharmed and Kelly is unconscious and everything and they do end up having to do an emergency c-section to get Sophia out and they brought Addison in from LA by helicopter specifically to deliver Sophia because if you guys don't know Addison is Derek Shepard's ex-wife and she is part of Seaside Wellness, which is part of private practice. She is known as Addison Montgomery, Addison Forbes Montgomery. She has an abundance of names, but they did fly her out to do the emergency c-section. I believe the correct term for Addison is that she's a neonatologist, possibly. She does surgeries on babies, and let me tell you, if you've seen my Grey's Anatomy tag video, you know that I think that Addison is so underrated. She can literally do surgeries on women and their babies while the baby is still inside the woman and bring them to full term. I just think that is insane that that can actually happen. But this episode is great. All the main characters in this episode in particular have a singing role and two of my absolute favorite songs which will also be included in my favorite songs video are Chasing Cars and How to Save a Life and they are covers and they are done by the cast which I absolutely love. Next up is season 9 episode 1 titled Going Going Gone and this is the season 9 premiere and it is the episode that takes place after the huge plane crash and is supposed to be taking place months later and this episode is so action-packed and crazy. It has flashbacks from years prior of things that have gone on. The new interns arrive at Seattle Grace Mercy West because this was before the hospital changed names and this is when interns such as Joe Wilson, Stephanie, and all that group came in to the show. It is the same episode where Owen Hunt flies to Moline, Ohio to see April Kepner who failed her medical exam to become a doctor so she ended up having to go back home and live on the farm and take care of the animals and Owen Hunt gets on a plane and goes to see her and tells her she belongs back at the hospital with all of them in Seattle and so she ends up going back with him and last but not least the biggest moment of this episode is that Mark Sloan has a surge which is essentially where he seems completely better but 
but he's actually not and this can sometimes happen right before death and this is the episode where he does in fact die. Moving on I have a bunch of episodes from season 11 that are my favorites and the first being season 11 episode 13 titled Staring at the End. This episode revolves all around Nicole Herman and her brain tumor which is said to be inoperable which we know ends up being operable. In this episode Herman teaches Arizona Robbins everything there is to know about fetal medicine and they go through an abundance of cases. Herman tells Arizona that she has completed a fellowship in six months that would normally take years. This is also where one of my favorite monologues is and it is when Amelia is presenting about Herman's tumor. Towards the end of the episode it becomes apparent that it is time for Nicole Herman to have her tumor removed and that is done by Amelia Shepard and while Amelia is prepping the OR Arizona is standing there with Herman holding her hand as she's wheeled into the OR and Arizona is filled with tears and tells Nicole Herman how she's not ready for her to go and Nicole Herman keeps telling her she's not going to come out gorked or anything like that and this is also one of the episodes of one of my favorite Amelia quotes and it's the life will always out you one which I will talk more about in my favorite quotes video. Next from that exact same season it's the episode after which is season 11 episode 14 titled The Distance and in this episode Amelia removes Herman's tumor and it takes her over 17 hours to do. This is also the episode where Amelia talks all about the superhero pose which says that if you stand in the superhero pose for five minutes before doing a big thing such as an interview, a presentation, or anything like that that you will do significantly better. It is the same episode that Nicole Herman wakes up from the inoperable brain surgery and she's not gorked which she is so happy about and she acts as though she is completely fine and while Arizona is standing at her bedside Arizona asks if she can see anything and Nicole Herman admits that she can't which is one of the saddest things going from being a world-renowned surgeon to not being able to see. However she is lucky because her tumor was completely removed. This is also an episode that has another one of my favorite Amelia quotes and it is the one about the key is to never fail which I will get into in my quotes video. The two previous episodes I mentioned were both paired and from that same exact season I have two other paired episodes and they are season 11 episode 21 titled how to save a life and this is the episode where Derek has his big car accident and essentially what happens is that he sees a car accident on the side of the road and he gets out to help them. While he is out on the scene there are four people there is a mother and a daughter and then two teenagers one of the teenagers has a major brain injury the other teenager has her guts spilling out of her stomach the little girl Winnie is completely unharmed other than a few bruises and scratches and then Winnie's mom had a dislocated hip that Derek ended up putting back in but before doing any of this Derek stood there and said his signature line of it is a beautiful day to save lives and Winnie asked him what that was and he explained it to her there was no way of communicating and one one of the cars in the accident actually ended up going up in flames and it sent a smoke signal which was then recognized and rescue came. As Derek was leaving the scene his phone began to ring and it actually had fallen underneath his passenger side seat and he reached down to get it and when that happened he was t-boned completely by a semi truck. All the patients including Derek ended up at Dillard Medical Center which is important to know and it is important to know that it is not a trauma center whatsoever. While there the doctors were unable to identify Derek until Winnie came over and said another one of my favorite quotes and it is the one about him staying undead and how he still has a pulse and is still alive and when Winnie is caught at his bedside she explains to one of the doctors Penny who is also important to remember that his name is Derek and that he is a surgeon and that he's the one who helped all four of them from the car accident scene. The doctor Penny Blake went back and told the other doctors and stuff and she she was pushing for a CT however she did not push hard enough for it and because of that Derek ends up dying and the reason you need to remember Penny is because she is perfect Penny who ends up dating Callie and showing up at Meredith's house with Callie for a party and when Meredith opens the door and sees her she doesn't say a thing but no one else knows including Callie about Penny and how she worked at Dillard and is the one who essentially killed Derek and then it all comes out at the dinner table. The reason I'm telling you this is because it is is not on my favorites list. If I had included 11 favorites that would definitely be one of them but I'm only doing 10 so I just decided to include this right here along with this episode. And it's 
hair is season 11 episode 22 titled she's leaving home this is the episode where Meredith arrives at Dillard Medical Center to see Derek after the police had shown up at her door and she did end up having to bring the kids who ended up staying with a social worker at the hospital this is also where Meredith meets Penny Blake for the first time I don't think a few of the doctors realized that Meredith was in fact a surgeon they kept trying to explain to her about the papers that she needed to sign to take him off the ventilators she didn't care all she wanted was to see Derek's medical records and then sign the paperwork and this episode also made me really angry because Meredith didn't call anyone or tell anyone and she didn't tell Amelia or anything like that that's one of those episodes that made me angry which I mentioned in the Grey's Anatomy tag I did Meredith also packs up the kids and goes and what we don't know at the beginning of this episode that we do know at the end is that Meredith was actually pregnant and Derek had no idea either this is when she was pregnant with Ellis and essentially Meredith packs up and moves I don't know if they actually tell us where she moved to but essentially she packed up and went off the grid didn't tell anyone Alex finally got in touch with her and Meredith said she was fine and to stop calling her and stuff and then Meredith ends up going into labor and bleeding and Zola has to call 911 they end up at the hospital and it turns out Alex was her emergency contact and one of the nurses comes in and says your husband is here and it ends up being Alex and he finds out about the secret baby in the end Alex ends up bringing them back to Seattle to the house to live and this episode is supposed to be taking place over a one year time span from the start of the episode to the end moving on another favorite of mine is season 12 episode 9 which is titled the sound of silence this episode is directed by Denzel Washington and in this episode Meredith gets beat up by a patient named Lou who is in a post ictal state after having a traumatic head injury and seizure and for those of you who don't know in a post ictal state you are essentially not in control of your body you don't know you don't realize what you're doing you don't know what you're doing you don't know how to act properly and stuff like that and Meredith was just in the room with him charting and he was in a post ictal state and ended up beating the ever living crap out of her once she is finally found by everyone else she is obviously taken into a room and everyone begins working on her obviously Nero was paged which ends up being Amelia obviously because Derek is no longer on the show and when Amelia gets there she can't handle it whatsoever she's in shock she can't stand seeing Meredith like that and she essentially collapses and ends up on the ground Meredith ends up having her jaw wired shut and the reason it is called the sound of silence is because she also loses her hearing in both ears and most of the episode is pretty silent another thing about Amelia and this episode is that Amelia relapses which is a really sad thing because before this Amelia had over a thousand days sober and she ended up relapsing and then ends up getting clean again and Meredith has not gained trust in her yet and that happens all throughout the episode the following four episodes are all from season 14 which if you guys know me know is my absolute favorite Grey's Anatomy season of all times I actually love it so much that I actually bought the DVD for it so I have it forever the first two are a pair and it is season 14 episode 3 titled go big or go home during this episode Karina DeLuca is doing her orgasm study and Amelia ends up volunteering to be part of it and on her MRI a tumor is found and Amelia ends up walking in and seeing it on the screen and says something along the lines of wow that is a beautiful tumor whose tumor is that and DeLuca and his sister are just standing there looking at her and then she realizes it is her own tumor this led Amelia to call Tom Karasik who is the head neurosurgeon at Johns Hopkins Hospital and she calls him so that he can come and remove her tumor this is also a point in time where Teddy Altman had come back into the picture when Owen's sister Megan was found after they all thought she was dead and it is quite obvious that Owen and Teddy have something going on and Owen was literally going to tell Amelia that he was leaving her and everything because they were not getting along and stuff and up on all these screens in the neuro room are Amelia's tumor and scans and everything and Amelia is just standing in there then Owen notices the name on all the scans and notices it says a shepherd and asks Amelia why her name is on those scans and then they both stand there in silence and he realizes that the tumor is Amelia's and then he becomes all nice along the lines of telling someone Amelia and Maggie are sitting together 
together and Amelia explains to Maggie that Maggie is gonna have to be the one to tell Meredith because Amelia can't do it because Meredith has been telling Amelia that she's the crazy sister and this tumor kind of makes her right. While Maggie is telling Meredith about Amelia's tumor, Owen goes with Amelia to help get her prepped for her surgery and this is at a point where Amelia and Meredith still aren't getting along completely but once Meredith finds out she goes and lays in the bed with Amelia. Next up is the paired episode which is season 14 episode 4 titled Ain't That a Kick in the Head. This is the episode where Tom Krasik actually goes in and removes Amelia's brain tumor. Before the surgery is done Amelia makes Krasik stand there in the superhero pose with her and explains the whole meaning behind it. After the surgery Amelia isn't awake however we can hear her voice and what she's thinking and when she does finally wake up the only language she can speak is French and Maggie ends up having to be the one to communicate with her. Finally when she is able to finally speak in English she tells Meredith that she should call Derek. Obviously at this point Derek is dead and Meredith kind of just looks at her in shock and then Amelia comes to and realizes that Derek is dead and they all think something is wrong because Amelia didn't remember that Derek was gone and then Amelia goes through this whole big thing where she's like no I know that Derek's dead I know that I don't know why I said it and all that kind of stuff. Towards the end of the episode Amelia is discharged from the hospital and knows that Owen was coming to end it all with her when he found out about her tumor. So she tells him that she is going to go home with her sisters and Owen says no come home with me and in the last scene of the episode you see her in a car and it ends up being that she's in the car going home with Owen. Continuing on there are two more episodes to talk about and the next is season 14 episode 10 titled Personal Jesus and this one is a great episode episode. In this episode, Joe Wilson's legal husband, because she is not divorced from him, Paul Stadler is brought into the hospital as a patient after being hit by a car. Everyone's eyes immediately went to Joe and Alex, specifically Alex, and they both had to go and stay away from the entire situation to talk to the police. However, as the episode goes on, we learn that it was in fact a drunk driver who did it and not Joe and Alex because they were at their apartment together. And basically, Paul was diagnosed with a concussion and his fiance had been talking to Joe and it turns out that Paul had been doing the same exact things that he did to Joe to his new fiance and she finally realized it all and was gonna leave him and Joe and his fiance went into his room and told him that and he got increasingly angry and it all came out that what he was doing was in fact true and it was seen by others and when this happened he ended up hitting his head on the footboard of the hospital bed, landing on the floor and going unconscious, which ended up giving him something called second impact syndrome, which if you guys don't know, second impact syndrome is when you get a second head injury on an already ongoing head injury that is not properly healed yet, which essentially left him brain dead. And originally they turned to his current fiance to make the decisions, but then someone brought it up that in fact, Joe's the one that was gonna have to make the decision because she was still legally his wife even though he'd signed the divorce papers because they had not been submitted and had not gone to court to be legally divorced yet. And so she asks the fiance if he still eats healthy and doesn't drink and stuff. And the fiance says yes, that he doesn't eat red meats, he goes for runs every day, doesn't drink alcohol or anything like that. So Joe makes the decision that his viable organs will be harvested and given to others. And lastly, the bonus one, since I had 11 and not 10, is is the season finale for season 14 which is season 14 episode 24 titled all of me and this episode made me cry it was definitely a favorite of mine and it definitely comes into my top for so many reasons in this episode April becomes Alex and Joe's wedding planner and the whole episode revolves around their wedding and so much happens at their wedding Joe and Alex go off to a shed to do things where they find a dead body that has become a skeleton they get locked in the shed. While this is happening, half of the guests are at a completely different wedding because the address got mixed up and at that wedding the mother actually ends up having an aortic dissection but then while everyone is waiting and trying to find Joe and Alex, their coordinator or something, not April but like their other coordinator, I don't know what you would call her, ends up eating shrimp and she's allergic to it and ends up having an allergic reaction and they end up having to use the straw part of a pinwheel during during an emergency crike, which if you don't know is where they cut a hole right in this space in here to allow you to breathe and it bypasses the upper airway like your epiglottis and stuff. As 
the episode goes on, the minister for Joe and Alex's wedding didn't end up showing up, and 90% of the guests went with Joe and Alex onto a boat to celebrate, even though they weren't married, and then Alex goes up to Meredith and says, with the click of this button, online, you can become an ordained minister, and so that is what she did, and she ended up marrying them on a boat. While all this was happening, back at the original venue, there were still a few people left. The main people were Jackson, April, Sophia, Arizona, Matthew, and I think Richard Weber, and then the minister finally showed up, and then April and Matthew end up getting married, which if you guys didn't know, April and Matthew were engaged at one point, and April ended up leaving him at the altar of their wedding. So, they decided to go for round two. This is also one of the saddest episodes because it is the last episode that has April Kepner and Arizona Robbins in it, and let me tell you, I miss those two so much, and they should not have been taken off the show. I am so mad about it, especially Arizona Robbins. I just mm, so angry. So those are just my top 10 favorite Grey's Anatomy episodes. Like I said, it is hard with a series that has 300 plus episodes to narrow it down to just 10, but I did my best. In the next few weeks, I will be uploading my top 10 favorite Grey's Anatomy quotes, as well as my top 20 Grey's Anatomy favorite songs. I was just gonna do my top 10 favorite songs, but there are way too many of them to just have 10. So I narrowed it down to 20. If you guys are excited to see those, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And like I mentioned earlier, let me know what your favorite episodes are in the comments. While you guys are down there, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I upload a wide variety of videos, including videos on medical assisting, Grey's Anatomy, college, and general life. And I would love it if you would become part of our little family here. Also, be sure to hit the bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. I hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you guys next time.